Welcome to another AP Chemistry General Chemistry lesson. We're focusing on acid-base chemistry in this video and specifically looking at weak acid problems. My name is Jeremy Krug and I hope you uh, learned some chemistry from this video. If you do and if you like what I'm doing here then please smash that thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel where I'm uh, putting the entire AP Chemistry course here on my YouTube channel for you do enjoy and make a five on that AP chemistry exam, uh, an A in your general chemistry class. We're gonna work a few problems in this video just to get the hang of, of doing this. We're gonna start with hydrofluoric acid. So it says this is used for glass etching in art. It's Ka, it's acid dissociation constant, is 6.8 times 10 to the negative four. So we're gonna start by writing the acid dissociation reaction for this acid. So the first thing that you wanna do is write out hydrofluoric acid, and at this point in the course, I hope you feel pretty com comfortable in knowing that that's HF. You should, you should know that at this point. Now we're gonna react it with water, and remember the products are always gonna be hydronium ion, H3O+, and the conjugate base of that acid. Just take off an H+, so we're left with F negative. So there's our reaction. Now, it's Ka expression in part B is just products over reactants raised to the power of the coefficient. So it's gonna be just like this. Remember, water is a pure liquid. We're gonna leave that out in every case. Now, to find the H plus and pH, we're gonna to need to set up an ice box here. So I'm gonna put our ice box that stands for initial uh, change and equilibrium concentrations. And we're going to uh, put in our concentration of HF, it says here that it's a 0.60 molar, so I'm gonna put a 0.60 here, and our hydronium and fluoride will be zero starting out, and we don't know anything else. So we're gonna put a negative X and positive X for the change row, and for equilibrium, that's 0.6 minus X, X and X, whenever we add and subtract those values. Now, we're just gonna plug into Ka and solve for X. Now, Ka, we have is 6.8 times 10 to the negative fourth, so I plug that in there for Ka. For hydronium, it's X. For fluoride, that's X. And HF is 0.60 minus X. Now, I notice that this is a fairly small equilibrium constant, not as small as some of the others that we've worked with, but we're gonna try to ignore that minus X there so we can avoid using the quadratic formula. We, we really try to avoid that if we can. And so now we can cross multiply and when we do that, we get, let's see, 0.60 times that number is about 4.08 times 10 to the negative fourth. And of course, x times x equals x squared. Well, now I can take the square root and find that x is equal to 0.0202. Now going back to our ice box, x is the H plus concentration, isn't it? So that answers part of part C. That's the H plus concentration, 0.0202 moles per liter. Now, what's the pH? Well, the pH is just negative log of H plus, isn't it? So we just take the negative log, base 10 of that number, and that's equal to 1.69. So that's, that makes sense. This is fairly acidic, so we would expect the pH to be very low, you know, way less than seven. So those are the answers to part C. Now, part D, the percent dissociation of this acid. Remember, like we said in the last video, percent uh, dissociation is always gonna be this number right here divided by that number right there times 100. So in this case, it's whatever the X was, 0 0.0202 divided by 0 0.60 times 100. And when we key that in, I'm running out of room here, but the answer is, that it is about 3.4%. So this is more dissociated than most of the other weak acids that we've worked with so far in, in this lesson, but it's still way less than 5%, so that's a, that is a good, a good sign for us here. Now let's work another problem. Let's say we have iodic acid, and it has the formula HiO3. A chemist obtains a 0.95 molar solution of iodic acid and notices that it is 34.3% dissociated. So way more than 5%. Calculate H plus, pH, and Ka for this acid solution at this temperature. It might be a good idea to write out our acid dissociation reaction, even though it's not 
specifically calling for that. We have our HiO3. It's being added to water. And the products are always hydronium and the conjugate base, which is IO3 negative in this case. Now let's set up an ice box and plug some numbers in here. The HiO3 concentration is 0.95. So we're going to put that in here. And the others are 0. So it tells us that it's 34.3% dissociated. Now that means that 34.3% of the 0.95 gets subtracted, gets basically uh, dissociated or broken apart into its ions. So we have to multiply 0.95 by 34.3% or, or, or this 0.343 when it's a decimal. So it's 0.33. That means that our change over here is not minus x. We know what x is. It's minus 0.33. And over here, it's going to be plus 0.33. That's just basic stoichiometry here. Now, our equilibrium Rho, whenever we do the uh, whenever we do the math on this, it's 0.62 molar, whenever you subtract. And of course, these two are 0.33 as well. Now, that actually answers part A, doesn't it? Because we wanted to know the concentration of H+. Well, we just figured it out. H+, and H3O+, are interchangeable, aren't they? So that's our concentration of hydronium, H+, 0.33 molar. Now, to find pH, we just take negative log of H+. plus. So take negative log of 0.33, and that's equal to 0 0.48 on your calculator. Now, how do we find Ka? Well, we're going to have to take products over reactants raised to the power of the coefficient. So that's hydronium ion concentration times iodate ion concentration all over the iodic acid equilibrium concentration. So this time, we just plug those in there, and it's equal to 0.18. So this is a very, as far as Ka's go, this is a very large value for Ka, as opposed to you know 10 to the minus fifth, 10 to the minus tenth, some of those others that we've been working with. So this is this is one of those cases where you can't just assume that you know this number is the same as that number because it's way more than 5%. You, you just can't. You have to actually do the subtraction. So it's, you know, it went all the way down to 0.62 at equilibrium. Let's do one more example. Let's do one that's a little bit tougher. We're going to look at ascorbic acid, also known as vitamin C. And there's its formula for us. Now, notice that it has two Ka values. Ka1 and a Ka2. Now, what in the world is that all about? Well, I want you to notice the formula for ascorbic acid. It's not H something, it's H2. It actually has two acidic hydrogens that can pop off in separate dissociation reactions. So what am I talking about? Well, in these two acid dissociation reactions, the first one is going to be just like the ones that we've had before. The H2, C6H6O6, is going to react with water and we're going to make hydronium ion. Now, what's the conjugate base of this? Well, we just take one of those H's off. So it would be HC6H6O6 with a negative charge, just like this. That's our first acid dissociation reaction for vitamin C. Now, what about the second one? Well, we're going to take this same product, this HC6H6O6, and we're going to do the same thing with this, except we're going to uh, have the second hydrogen pop off. So it's going to react with water. We're going to make some hydronium. And this time, what's the, uh, the conjugate base of this stuff here? Well, it's C6H6O6 with a negative 2 charge. So notice we have two separate acid dissociations. That's why we have two separate Ka values. The Ka1 is right here. The Ka for this reaction is 6.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. The Ka for this reaction down here is much smaller. It's 2.8 times 10 to the negative twelfth. Now, we've, we have part A done. Let's do part B. Let's calculate the H+. Plus. Now, we're going to do an icebox just like we've always done here. And it says it is a 0.25 molar solution of this 
of this acid, vitamin C. So I'm going to put 0.25 in here. And of course, these two will, will actually be zero. And these are going to be minus x, plus x, and plus x, just like they've always been. The equilibrium will be just like they've always been. You know, plug those in there. And we're going to insert these into the equilibrium constant expression. So we have H3O plus times HC6H6O6 negative all over H2C6H6O6. And that's equal to the Ka1 here. So we plug those numbers in. So our Ka1 was 6.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. And that's equal to x times x over 0.25 minus x. Now, we're going to try to ignore the minus x right here since it's probably going to be very small. We have a very small Ka value. So I'm going to take that out. Now we can cross multiply. And I can take the square root. So x is equal to 4.12 times 10 to the minus third. Now, as you might notice here, let me back up a little bit here. X is the same as our H plus, our H3O plus, isn't it? So that means that that is the H plus concentration here in this. Now, to find pH, we just have to take the negative log of that number. So we're going to take negative log of 4.12 times 10 to the minus third, and we get 2.38 as our pH. So that's the answer. Now, you might notice but there's something conspicuously absent in this. I completely ignored the Ka2. What in the world did I do that for? That seemed like it should have been important, right? Well, the Ka2, we could have used that to calculate the additional hydronium that was produced in that second dissociation. And there honestly will be a little bit more hydronium produced in the second dissociation. However, we're not going to do that. And there are two reasons for that. And it's not just because we don't want to. The first reason is the value for Ka2 is extremely small compared to Ka1. The Ka2 was like on the order of 10 to the minus uh, 12th, I believe, from my notes here. Yes, yeah, so it was very, very small compared to 10 to the minus 5th. It was like 1 1 millionth as big. So it, it really doesn't matter. Number two, the second dissociation produces a minuscule, a minuscule amount of hydronium. Now let me show you what I'm talking about when I say min minuscule. I have taken the liberty of doing this for you, and I've actually calculated how much H plus would come from that additional Ka2. And the answer is 1.07 times 10 to the minus seventh molar. So if we want to find the total H plus, we'd have to take the 4.12 times 10 to the minus third that we got in our Ka1, add in the H plus from the Ka2, which is 1.07 times 10 to the minus seventh. And for good measure, since we're talking about values that are so, so small, you know, 10 to the minus seventh order, let's add in the H plus from the dissociation of water, the auto dissociation of water, which is another one times 10 to the minus seventh. And we get a grand total of, are you ready? 4.12 times 10 to the minus third, which is exact, for all practical purposes, the same as we started with. So in AP chemistry, do not worry about the Ka2. Okay? The amount of H plus we get from that is so, so tiny, it is not even worth our time to worry about. Perhaps in an analytical chemistry class or, or an upper level class, you can worry about that. But in AP chemistry, we're not going to worry about it. So in this video, we've worked some very typical weak acid pro uh, problems. And so if you uh, are able to follow these types of acid problems, you should be able to get through just about any weak acid problem that they could throw at you on the AP chemistry exam or in a, a typical general chemistry class. Like I said, my name is Jeremy Krug. I've been teaching AP chemistry for over 20 years, and I want you to get an A in your class. So if you liked my video, smash that thumbs up button and subscribe. Uh, so that way uh, YouTube will share the video with some other folks and join me again where we can learn some more acid-based acid chemistry together.